The influx of medical information during this pandemic is downright dizzying. So on today's show, we're going to clarify all things COVID confusion, or at least try. To start, if the pandemic wasn't enough, now we have flu season creeping around the corner, and many are bracing for what's being called a twindemic. Let's take a viewer question involving the flu and COVID-19. Hey guys, my name is Jessica Thompson, and my question is, is it possible to get COVID and the flu at the same time? Joining me is infectious disease epidemiologist, Dr. Monica Gandhi. Dr. Gandhi, thanks for joining me today. Thank you. So Dr. Gandhi, let's start right off. What's the real risk of getting the flu and COVID-19 at the same time? One can definitely get flu and COVID-19 at the same time um, because, you know, they work through different receptors and you can get unlucky enough to get both. Um, so it's a real possibility this season. So let's talk about the COVID rapid test um, that's going to be used in tandem with the rapid test for the flu. Explain the rapid test for us. It can be done in a doctor's office, just like a pregnancy test, like a urine pregnancy test that you get the results right away. You don't have to go send it to a lab and have processing occur. So the time to get the results are going to be within minutes. Within, um, it can happen right in the doctor's office. And it just is not expensive because it doesn't take all that processing, laboratory personnel, special fancy machines. So it is a major leap forward, I think, in testing in this country. Well, that's some good positive news, considering we've had so much bad news when it comes to testing yeah. and availability. Well, at the beginning of this pandemic, we were sanitizing everything for fear of getting covid but some countries are taking this idea of sanitation way too far. Take a look at a disinfection tunnel people have to walk through in Kazakhstan that sprays them with a cleansing solution. Dr. Gandhi, you say this is a terrible idea. This is a terrible idea. <laughs> I mean, really, um, going through disinfecting tunnels is not needed at all. And in fact, we have not seen convincing evidence that you can get spread from surfaces. And so that's why the CDC and other organizations have stopped saying that, that you can get it from surfaces. And really disinfecting a human being and going through a tunnel is just uh, majorly overkill. And it really is cover up your nose and mouth because you don't want to spread it even when you feel well. What about the idea that if there's a lot of virus on a handle, let's say someone sneezes, they touch a handle going into an office building, there's virus living on the handle, you come and you touch that handle, and then you sit at your desk and you eat. Isn't it possible to infect yourself with the virus? It is possible, but very unlikely. And what I mean by that is we just haven't seen convincing evidence that transmission has occurred that way. Thus, the major public health principles of hand hygiene. So, yeah, sure, before you eat, absolutely. Yeah. Wash so we're, your hands. So we're saying even though the evidence so far is not overwhelmingly convincing, that that's a major route of transmission, we still want to exercise proper sanitary techniques of washing your hands when you touch public services. In general, you should be doing that, correct? Exactly. These are just basic public health principles. Wash your hands, hand hygiene before you eat. These are all the right things to do. But going crazy and going through disinfecting tunnels and spraying everyone down is not the right thing to do. It is overkill.